Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The Industrial Development Corporation's results offered a high-level view of some of the difficulties being faced in South Africa's productive sectors. Terence Screamer joins me to share some insight. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. The IDC cuts across many sectors. What does its results say about the state of the real economy? Well, they had uh, what looked like on paper good results. So they had a profit of 3.4 uh, billion rand. But if you dig a little bit deeper, you can see the stresses that the South African economy, especially the real economy, uh, is facing. Now, the IDC lends into sectors like manufacturing, primarily um, mining and metals, as well as agro-processing and uh, renewable energy. And all those uh, are areas where there's, there's a lot of strain at the moment as we can see in the fixed investment numbers, as we can see in the employment numbers. And uh, this was really reflected in IDC's results in the form of a very big rise in impairments uh, by 178% uh, for the year, uh, 2.9 billion ra uh, rands worth of impairments. Uh, this is mostly related to one subsidiary, FOSCOR, which, uh, which contributed 1.8 billion of that because of what was happening in that market phosphate rock miner, phosph phosphoric acid producer, and that market took some strain. I think there's been some recovery since. So they've, they've had to adjust the, the value uh, in their book. But overall, there's been this rise in the, in the percentage uh, of impairments to total financing costs, and that's risen uh, to over 4 billion, or 4.9 billion actually, and which is 17% uh, of its total book. Now, IDC has set a threshold of 20%, so it's not quite there yet, but it's getting quite close. So you can see that uh, the underlying investments that uh, the IDC has, and it's, it cuts across so many different sectors in the real economy, some of these are taking some real strain. And in, in order to balance uh, the book and books and to have this positive result, a lot of that related to the disposal of legacy investments. So they've, uh, they've exited a whole lot of investments that they hold, mostly unlisted as well as the unwinding of the Xara BE structure, which gave them a sort of a, a tailwind, a financial tailwind for the year. But if it hadn't been for those disposals and that uh, Xara unwinding, I think the results would have looked a lot more dire. Uh, but uh, they are a development finance institutions, so they are meant to be taking more risk. It's just that whether that risk is sustainable in the long run is important because we don't want to have to bail out an institution like the IDC which has been self-financing for so long. How is the IDC responding to the high level of impairments? Well, they've set up a specialized unit to pay particular attention to these large investments they have in things like uh, FOSCOR and previously SCORE. SCORE Metals is in, they're in the process of disposing of their interest in that to strategic equity partners. Uh, and that unit will be, I suppose, giving special um, intensive care uh, and monitoring to those big lumpy uh, uh, holdings, as well as some of their larger uh, uh, investments generally, um, not necessarily subsidiaries in, in the economy, to make sure that those, th 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 those risks are managed. The other thing is that uh, they made it very clear that FOSCO uh, needs to be de-risked for them. And like they did with SCORE, uh, which they've now injected strategic equity partners or they've sold to strategic equity partners. Two of the units are sold of the three and they're trying to wrap up the third transaction. I think a similar approach is going to be done now with FOSCO. This has been on and off again for many years. I mean, at one stage when the market for fertilizers is looking really promising, they were talking about an IPO for FOSCO. But I think we're probably going to see a similar pattern as we've seen with SCORE, trying to find a strategic equity partner, someone who can really turn around that business. And that should help de-risk the IDC's uh, lending book. It also gave details about its support for President Ramaphosa's $100 billion investment drive. Yeah, so investment is the, the sort of maxim of the new dawn. And uh, Sir Ramaphosa, uh, the president, has set a target of attracting $100 billion worth of domestic and foreign investment over the coming five years. Everyone is scr scratching their head, or I suppose prior to the BRICS summit, everyone was scratching their head to see where some of this investment was going to come from. Obviously, that we've already seen uh, that the Chinese have a, some sort of appetite for South Africa and for some projects. 
uh, although a lot of this is going into uh, brown fuel or existing projects, for instance, funding for Kusile, funding for Transnet locomotives, and things like that has come out, uh, come from the Chinese uh, banks. But uh, generally, there's this push towards investment, and uh, the IDC has is acting as the secretariat for this program. So it's playing a key role in developing pipeline of opportunities for investors uh, or creating visibility around the pipeline and feeding that into the investment envoys that um, uh, President Ramaphosa has, has appointed. And those investment envoys are going around the world and domestically to try and um, say that South Africa is open for investment. We've had this very low investment phase. Uh, was really was weighed down by the politics of the day there's a, there's a suggestion that some of that is behind us and that uh, South Africa is open for investment business again. However, even the IDC acknowledges, as the envoys have, is that in the, the sectors, in particular the real economy sectors that the IDC focus on, focuses on, there's real um, uh, serious headwinds in terms of policy uncertainty. So in the agro-processing space, you have to look at the, on the other side of the coin. There's the land debate and the changes to Section 25 of the Constitution that are being proposed. In the, uh, uh, in the space of the mining sector, we still have deep uncertainty around the shape of the mining charter. And I think until that's really sorted out, it's hard for an investor to put uh, greenfield projects back, on, back onto the, the radar. I think we are seeing a number of inside the fence mining projects, uh, brownfield expansions, that real greenfield uh, mining projects are going to wait for that policy certainty. And likewise, they've been a big investor in the re renewable energy sector. Now, we did get the 27 projects uh, signed earlier this year. That was that at least ended the impasse that lasted for over two years in renewable energy. And there are indications that there will be an, another bid window before the end of the year for renewable energy. But we don't yet have an integrated resource plan for electricity. So the visibility for investment in that sector is not great beyond these 27 and maybe the next bid window. So we need to have that policy certainty. And the chairman, uh, the chairperson um, uh, of IDC acknowledged that. And they say in all interactions with government, they're raising that policy, policy certainty as a constraint to the pipeline. Uh, because if you're selling and exiting, as they are, a whole lot of legacy investments, which is good money, you need to have a, you know, a portfolio of uh, a potential projects or investments to put that money that you now want to recycle back into the economy. And uh, I mean, at least in the 2018 year, we did say that see that record levels of both approvals and disbursements. And the disbursements figure was particularly impressive because there's always a big uh, announcement around approvals, but when you look at the disbursements, the gap is usually very, very wide. And it's really only when the money is dispersed that it gets injected into the economy. And then uh, this last year, the IDC managed to close that gap. So approvals were 16.7 billion, and uh, the disbursements were 15.4 billion, and disbursements were massively up from the 11 billion in the previous year. So we are seeing that there's a real focus but there still needs to be a, a pipeline. And, and until that policy certainty uh, is dealt with, uh, as the chairman was saying, then it's going to be difficult. But she did indicate that, um, that they are sensitive, that these are fundamental issues. So there has to be a balance between prudence and speed in de dealing with some of these very, very deep-seated fundamental changes that we're looking at both in land, mining, and potentially energy. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.